We're going to jump into it now, though, with our first presentation for the day. The company is PDS Biotech, and I'm welcoming on here the CEO of PDS Biotech, Tech, Frank Bedu Adu. How you doing? Good. How are you? Good morning, Thanks Frank. Morning. Very good to see you. Same here. How's your day going so far? So far, so good. Very so interesting far, conversations. So good. You, were, you were tuned in a little bit there? Yeah. Good stuff, right, from Don. Yes. Awesome. Well, I'll let you take it away, and let's kick it off. Okay. Well, th thank you very much again for the invitation to present at the Benzinga Healthcare Small Cap Conference. Um, for the attendees, um, as usual, please make sure you are familiar with the risk factors associated with a company as filed with the SEC. So PDS Biotechnology, our ticker symbol PDSB, is a mid-clinical stage cancer immunotherapy company developing first-in-class treatments for cancer. PDS Biotech has developed Versimmune, which is a proprietary platform technology that has demonstrated excellent potential to overcome some of the most significant limitations of cancer immunotherapy. Now, our lead product, PDS0101, has generated highly promising preliminary data in advanced and untreatable HPV-associated cancer patients. So data from the first 18 patients in our most advanced phase two clinical trial that's led by the National Cancer Institute has been reported. Now, in these previously untreatable patients, all had failed chemotherapy treatment as well as radiation treatment. Among these patients, 67% of them had also failed treatment with state-of-the-art checkpoint inhibitors such as the blockbuster drugs of Devo and Ketruder. Now, upon treatment with the PDS-0101M combination, reduction of the cancer was seen in almost 70% of the patients, with some of those patients already showing no evidence of the cancer. So PDS-0101 is currently being evaluated as a combination therapy in three phase two human clinical trials. Each of these phase two trials is partnered with a leader in the field of oncology, Merck, the National Cancer Institute, and MD Anderson Cancer Center. This Versimmune technology is now being applied to the development of a broader pipeline of products. PDS Biotechnology has no debt, and as of June 30th, had approximately $75 million in cash. The Versimmune technology is protected by multiple patents that provide protection at least through the mid 2030s. So what, what I'll do today is I'll start the presentation by providing an introductory overview of how the Versimune technology works. I'll then review the recently reported preliminary or interim data for our National Cancer Institute-led phase two trial, followed by an update on the versatile 002 trial in which PDS0101 is administered in combination with Merck's blockbuster immunotherapy, Keytruda. Next, I'll discuss how this technology platform is being applied to a broader pipeline of oncology products, and then I'll conclude with the near-term milestones. Now, due to COVID-19, there has been a lot of discussion about neutralizing antibodies. However, there is another very important component of our immune system. These are our killer T cells, which constitute the attacking arm of the immune system. Now, Versimmune is a nanoparticle that's made from a patented synthetic and biodegradable lipid. And Versimmune has been engineered to effectively recruit, train, and activate a large army of killer T cells within the body to specifically recognize and attack cancer cells. Now, to achieve this, Versimmune is administered together with a protein that is unique or specific to the cancer we're seeking to treat, right? The result is an induction in vivo of a superior quantity of the right type of tumor targeting killer T cell with superior killing potency. Now, secondly, Versamine has shown the potential to induce high quality memory T cells, which could therefore lead to durable and long-term anti-tumor efficacy. So by being able to achieve a unique combination of both safety and potency, Versamine could present strong potential to provide more effective treatments for cancer. So 
So PDS-0101 is being developed to treat cancers caused specifically by HPV type 16, including anal, cervical, head and neck, vaginal, and vulva cancers, and also penile cancers. HPV type 16, also called HPV 16, is the most aggressive cancer-causing type of HPV, and 70 to 80% of all HPV-associated cancers are caused by HPV 16. Now, the PDS-0101 immunotherapy consists of diverse mu nanoparticles formulated with small, short proteins from HPV 16 in order to train and activate the attacking arm of our immune system, the killer T cells, to target and kill the cancer cells that are infected with HPV 16. And these cancers are referred to as HPV 16 positive cancers. In the United States, approximately 43,000 patients every year are diagnosed with an HPV-related cancer. So the initial treatment for HPV-associated um, cancers is usually radiation treatment with or followed by chemotherapy if necessary. Now, a significant percentage of these patients will typically fail treatment or relapse and continue to progress to metastatic disease. Now, these advanced and refractory patients who have failed treatment but have not yet been treated with checkpoint inhibitors constitute the first group of patients evaluated in our NCI, National Cancer Institute-led trial. So these patients are referred to as checkpoint inhibitor naive patients. So failed chemotherapy, failed radiation treatment, but not yet treated with checkpoint inhibitors. Checkpoint inhibitors have been FDA approved to treat patients with refractory HPV associated cancer who have failed radiation and chemotherapy treatment. Unfortunately, about 80% or more of these patients who are treated with checkpoint inhibitors will also fail checkpoint inhibitor therapy and continue to progress. So this checkpoint inhibitor refractory group of patients who have failed treatment with all these options and have very few options available to them, have a, of an overall historical survival of only three to four months, these patients constitute the second group of patients evaluated in this trial. So as you may have realized from what I've said so far, PDS-0101 is being tested and evaluated in some of the most difficult to treat patient populations who have few treatment options remaining. Now, this is important not only to demonstrate the power of the technology, but this approach could also facilitate more rapid clinical development and commercialization of the products, the versamine based products. So in this National Cancer Institute-led trial, PDS-0101 is administered in combination with two of EMD Serono's clinical stage immunotherapies, Bintrafasap Alpha, which is a bifunctional checkpoint inhibitor that works by making the cancer cells more visible to the immune system, and M9241, which is an immunocytokine. The trial will enroll about 56 patients, and the National Cancer Institute expects full enrollment sometime during the first quarter of 2022. Now, the scientific basis and rationale for clinical evaluation of this novel triple combination, as well as the preclinical data, was published in a top peer-reviewed journal, the June 17, 2020 issue of the Journal for Immunotherapy of Cancer. Now, at the time of the American Society of Clinical Oncology Conference in June of this year, where the data was presented, the HPV-16 positive patient pool included 40% of the patients who had cervical cancer, 24% had anal cancer, another 24% had head and neck cancer, and 12% had either vaginal or vulva cancer. Now, on the slide here, I show the data from the first group of six patients, those who had failed radiation therapy as well as chemotherapy. And as I mentioned, for this group of advanced cancer patients, the standard of care is checkpoint inhibitor therapy. And the reported response rate in these patients, meaning that this, this will work in approximately 20% or less of these patients will respond to treatment with the checkpoint inhibitors. Now, in the study group who received the PDS-0101-based combination, 
five out of six or 83 percent had an objective response to treatment. Now, what this means is that these five patients experienced tumor reduction of 30 percent or more. And one of the five of these patients had already experienced a complete response, meaning that there was no longer any evidence of the cancer. Now on the slide, I show the next group of 12 patients who in, a, these are the patients who in addition to failing chemotherapy and radiation treatment had also failed treatment with checkpoint inhibitors. In this group of patients, further treatment approaches are only effective in 10% or less than 10% of these patients. The National Cancer Institute reported tumor reduction in seven out of 12 of the patients who were treated with the pds one um, combination, almost a 60% efficacy rate with a complete response reported in one of the seven patients. Now, it's important to note, as I show on the current slide, that at a median of eight months, 100% of the checkpoint inhibitor naive HPV-16 positive patients were still alive. So those patients who had failed chemotherapy and radiation treatment and treated with the PDS-0101 triple combination. Despite the historical survival for these pa patients, typically within the seven to 11 month range, in this case, at the median of eight months, 100% of these patients were still alive. Now, if we go to the checkpoint inhibitor refractory group, these are the patients who, in addition to chemo and radiation, had also failed checkpoint inhibitor therapy. These patients have a historical median survival of about three to four months. In this case, at a median of eight months, 83% of these patients were still alive. So the results from both groups of patients are highly encouraging. Two key things we will be looking out for in the near term from this novel triple combination are first an update on the additional patients who have been enrolled since ASCO, and secondly, the survival times for the patients whose data was presented at ASCO. Now, since the study involves a triple combination, one of the questions that we are very often asked is how do we know that PDS0101 specifically is actually contributing towards the positive outcomes reported here? Now, the fact that PDS0101 is designed to treat cancers that are positive for HPV16 is very important. Right? Among the three immunotherapies in the triple combination, PDS0101 is the only one designed to promote the induction of killer T cells that are primed to recognize a specific predetermined tumor associated protein, in this case, HPV type 16, and to kill the host cells. Now, in the National Cancer Institute led study that we're talking about, seven patients whose, cancer, whose HPV associated cancers were not HPV 16 positive were enrolled. Now, this means that these seven patients had a cancer that was caused by another type of HPV other than type 16, meaning that by taking this triple combination, their immune systems or their T cells had been trained to recognize a different enemy rather than the enemy that is causing their particular cancer, which in this case is HPV 16, right? That's what the T cells have been trained to recognize and attack and eliminate, right? So as you can see on the slide, 67% of the patients, of the 18 patients whose refractory cancers were HPV 16 positive, saw clinical benefit with tumor reduction. Not a single one of the patients infected with the non-HPV 16 types of HPV had any response, right? These studies therefore strongly suggest that there may be a critical role of PDS0101 in effectively training, recruiting, training, and activating the T cells, even in terminally ill patients, to recognize and specifically attack those HPV-16 positive cancer cells. Now, an important benefit of an ideal protein-specific immunotherapy, such as what PDS Biotech is developing, is that it may not matter where in the body the tumors reside or what type of cancer the patient has so long as the cancer expresses or is positive 
for the unique tumor-specific protein that the immune system has been trained to recognize and attack. So as reported with this National Cancer Institute study, very importantly, it did not matter where in the body the cancer was located, whether it was anal, cervical, head and neck, vaginal, or vulva cancer. So long as it expressed or contained HPV-16, we saw positive anti-tumor benefit. These results reported by the NCI strongly suggest that the Versmute technology may be working effectively as designed to efficiently activate the body to produce the relevant type of tumor attacking killer T cells. Now moving on to the second trial, Versatile002. In this trial, this trial is specifically led by PDS Biotechnology and is studying the combination of PDS0101 with Merck's blockbuster immunotherapy Keytruda in advanced recurrent or metastatic HPV-16 positive head and neck cancer. Approximately 90% of HPV positive head and neck cancers are caused by HPV-16. Keytruda is FDA approved standard of care for first line treatment of recurrent or metastatic head and neck cancer. This trial is recruiting approximately 25 patients, approximately 100 patients across approximately 25 sites within the United States. We recently reported that we had achieved a key milestone for this trial by completing recruitment for the safety cohort or the safety group for this trial. It was then subsequently reported that no dose limiting toxicities were observed among this um, safety group and that our drug monitoring committee consisting of renowned industry experts had therefore provided the authorization for enrollment into the trial to continue without any changes to the protocol. Now, this trial, similarly to the NCI-led trial, will enroll both checkpoint inhibitor naive and checkpoint inhibitor refractory subjects who are HPV-16 positive. Now, in this trial, it is important to note here that unlike the novel triple combination that's being evaluated by the NCI, in this, with the Versatile 002 trial, and also with our third trial being led by MD Anderson Cancer Center, PDS0101 is being combined with the FDA approved standard of care. We believe therefore that if it is possible to improve clinical benefit to these patients over what's seen with the standard of care alone, without compounding toxicity, that the potential for successful commercialization improves significantly. The results from the Versatile 002 safety group, therefore, are very extremely encouraging, and we will continue to monitor safety as the trial recruitment continues. Now, as a result of the successful evaluation of the safety cohort, we remain on track to provide preliminary efficacy data next quarter or early in 2022. So at PDS Biotech, we believe that Versmune's mechanism of action will enable us to build a robust oncology pipeline beyond PDS0101. Here I show the current pipeline in development, the three ongoing PDS0101 clinical trials, PDS0102 addressing TARP positive cancers, including prostate and breast cancer, as well as um, um, myeloid, um, acute myeloid leukemia, AML, PDS0103 addressing Mach 1 positive cancers, including colon, breast, lung, and ovarian cancers, and TRP2 positive cancers such as melanoma. In our preclinical studies, as seen on the slide, when versamine is formulated with the tumor-specific protein PDS0102, or with the tumor-specific protein Mach 1, or in, as in PDS0103, or with the melanoma-specific protein um, TRP2 in PDS0104, similar or superior levels of T cell, tumor-specific T cell activation is seen when compared with PDS0101. These products, the, the potency of these products appears to um, compare very favorably with what we've seen with PDS0101. With PDS0101, the preclinical results appear to have translated quite well to humans. Hey, Frank, Frank, I want to jump in here and it doesn't look like you're all the way done yet, but we do have a couple good questions from the audience. So if you, sure. if you're, if you're able to take a couple quick questions, let's do that now. 
Sure, let's let's do that. Okay, awesome. So the the chat was very interested in what you had to say. We got a couple of good questions. Like I said, a uh, question from Stephen here. He said, "Will the Keytruda trial allow for quick commercialization of the drug by PDS?" Well, we, we hope so. We certainly hope so. So as I mentioned, with Keytruda being the current standard of care, one of the key things we look for is if we can enhance that clinical benefit without compounding toxicity. So if we can sure. show the safety with additional clinical benefit, we believe that that significantly speeds up the commercialization process. So we are, we are highly optimistic about this trial. Great. And then uh, Dan is asking if you've identified a combo for any of the other candidates, PDS-102, PDS-103, or PDS-104. Um, we actually have started working on some candidates for combination that we're currently evaluating. So, for example, right. with PDS-0103, there's currently work going on at the National Cancer Institute looking at different combos with the goal of completing that and taking this into human clinical trials Excellent. sometime between the second and third quarters of next year. Excellent. Well, we're going to have to wrap there, Frank. Unfortunately, if we had a few more good questions, but we're not going to be able to get to them. Thanks so much for joining us. PDS Biotech, Frank, he's the CEO and the ticker is, throw it on the screen there. It's PDSB. I see it. Thanks so much for joining us, Frank. Thank you very much for having me. Have a good rest of your day. You too. Thank you.